Konnichiwa everyone. Today we got something kind of interesting that we're going to do. I recently came into the possession of this. This is a very cool and very unique Japanese plane. A little lesson on Japanese for you. This is called a Kikai Shakurikana and they go by a couple of different names. Again, I'm not an expert on Japanese so don't quote me on the way I'm saying that. The word Kikai in short means machine and then Shakurikana is plow plane so this is essentially a machine plow plane. Now even though it's not a machine and it doesn't really have any mechanical moving parts. In Japanese culture, according to Mr. Toshio Odate, any Japanese tool or thing that uses bolts and screws is automatically called a machine. And as you can see, there's quite a few screws and there's quite a few bolts. This one is kind of old and it's pretty interesting because the wing nuts on here are actually, they're not perfectly cast and they're not perfectly even. And they're actually brass, which is kind of cool. So we'll see what this thing has. We're going to actually clean this guy up, get to use it a little bit. I've got some really cool projects in mind that we're going to use this for. These are not the simplest planes in the world to work on, nor are they the simplest planes to fix because there's a lot of different parts to it. But as with all projects, everything starts with square one. So first thing we're going to do is get this fence off here. And yeah, definitely this thing has been sitting for a long time because we got quite a bit of rust on these washers here. Now the fence is comes off like that. Oh. Once I retrieve the washer that ran away from me, the fence comes off like so. Lock the fence where you want it. You have these little thumb wheels on the inside. It's going to get these guys off too. Anyway, now that we got those off, there, whoa, check this out. <laughs> the uh, holes here that actually lock this in place. If you've ever heard the term trying to fit a square peg into a round hole, uh, this kind of is the definition of that. They actually took a square Looks like they just took a square nut, hammered it into the hole here, the teeth bite into the circle here, and keep this from spinning around when you're putting the parts on it. That is actually kind of clever. So taking the blades out of this won't be too hard either. They just got these little curls over it. And technically I think they did this so that you can hammer these down in where they need to be, but this, uh, this, whoa, wasn't that hard. <laughs> so the two blades come out pretty much like so. This has a little chip breaker on it, so this may not come out so easy. A couple of friendly taps with a local encouragement device. Yeah, it's coming out. It's just not coming out too quickly. There we go. Alright, so the blade is essentially a modified chisel, so you've got a little Euro back here. Yeah, they're actually in pretty good shape. I might not have to do too much work to them, but uh, we'll do a little more work here on the other stuff and see where we're at. All right, so now we're going to take this apart. This is actually three separate pieces. So if you can see, you have the one panel here, and then you have this little wedge here, which I think this is called the skate. But next order of business is we've got to remove these nuts here. And they may... Let's just try it and... Oh, oh, yep. Weren't on there very tight which is good news for me because oh, oh that's a nice surprise usually when stuff's been on there for 30 40 years it usually doesn't want to come off so easily come on come on Bessie there we go <laughs> wow that has been on there a long long time we're gonna see what kind of condition these screws are in I got a feeling this is not gonna be easy oh, come on bit Ah, really did not want to do that. All right, well, we're going to employ one of the handyman secret weapons, WD-40. Little dab will do you. All right, so I'm going to let this sit for a couple of hours, let that kind of soak in, hopefully loosen up some of those threads in there. Check back on it in a bit, try again, and see what we get. All right, well, I done goofed up a bit. So I hit this thing with about 10 coats. 10 coats, mind you, of WD-40. I even went and got some rust release stuff. Still did not make these things budge. So I got the bright idea to drill these things out. Guess what? They still don't want to move. So in light of that, I think I'm gonna take a little bit different approach with this. Instead of trying to keep this thing original, the whole point of me taking this off was to actually correct this warp that you see right here. This does not allow the blades here, which are the knickers, to actually close to the correct distance. So what's happening, is that the knickers are going in too deep and the blade itself doesn't want to sit still. As you can see, it's pretty wide on this side. I think the best plan of action in this case is going to be to actually cut this very carefully along these lines here. And uh, yeah, just make a new side for it. Unfortunately, it's not going to match, but that's not a big deal for me. 
because in most cases it's about being practical and what good is a tool if you can't use it? So, all right, here goes nothing. All right, making some good progress. I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do, but we're getting there one little piece at a time. So there's the reason that those screws wouldn't come out because they were rusted globs of metal. Yeah, no fun. Aha, success. It uh, came apart. I did manage to save this skate. The other one got a little bit of a crack in it, but honestly, that won't be too hard to fix. A little bit of wood glue should make it right as rain. Okay, so sometime later, the other skate is repaired. You can barely tell that there was a crack, and that's good because this thing goes right back where it ought to be. Oop, not this way. Oh, not that way either. There we go. Through the magic of editing, I'm actually not gonna show you guys all the little tidbits here. Just suffice to say, this is going to be what we're going to cut our new panel out of because this, uh, all these little bits here, that's all that's left of the panel. So after some sawing, cutting, and planing, we have here our new front panel. The color doesn't quite match, but uh, yeah, not really that worried about it. So we're going to get this guy cut down. I'm going to actually try to trace as best as I can where this little relief cut is here. Again, not too terribly worried about how that's going to turn out because... I think we're going to be just fine as it sits because honestly most of the pressure is going to be on this section here and that section there so I'm not too concerned with it. That's, that's reasonably close. So we'll get that cut out and we will proceed with as little caution as possible. At the risk of fingers, let us venture forth and see what we can discover. So a little bit of work goes into it, a little bit of cutting, and it's uh, pretty close. I'm pretty happy with that. So we're going to have to do this the hard way. Basically where these nails are, which are the pens, but it looks like they just hammered them through and then cut the ends off, but nothing wrong with that. What we're going to do is we're going to take the other face and we're going to cut out a little bit of relief where these pens are. I've kind of tapped it in so I kind of know where to cut. I'm doing this so that I can get the face lined up and then we're going to kind of spot glue it. I'll show you how to do that. It's a neat little trick. There we go. It should give us a little bit of wiggle room to do our work. Let's put a screw in that and see what we can get. Well, a good bit of advice is plan for the worst, hope for the best. That is definitely the worst that could have happened. I'm not sure how I'm going to get that out. Dang, nah, that is really irritating. I'm so close, so close to being done. Okay, so I do not feel like redoing this entire thing just because of this. I'm going to leave this here as a stark reminder my, to myself of my miserable failures. So we're going to go back through and I'm going to recut all these pilot holes. Uh, yeah, we're just going to leave that. I might add another one here, or kind of close to it, to maybe, maybe draw some attention away from it. But uh, yeah, that's that's gonna be there. All right. So before we do our final assembly, I'm gonna show you guys a neat little trick you can use to line up parts like this. And all we're gonna do is we're just gonna put it on this section here. Not enough to really permanently mount it, but we're gonna do enough so that it holds itself in place. This little technique is something I picked up from violin makers, and they call it spot gluing. So you just put a little dab there, not a lot. You're not trying to permanently attach this thing. You do want to be able to take it apart in the future. Now this glue that I'm using is fish glue, and fish glue it gets a pretty high tack pretty quickly, so you don't have to hold it on there too long, but you get it lined up where you want it. We're going to let that dry for a little bit, come back to it in a bit. This stuff usually gets kind of tacky after about five, ten minutes or so. All right, as you can see, spot gluing has worked. We are gonna get this on here, put some screws in it. I decided not to countersink all these screws since I just don't really like the look of the previous ones, but that's okay. If you like the look of countersunk screws, that is perfectly fine. And as I always say, it doesn't have to be pretty, 
but it does have to be practical, so another screw next to that. Uh, someone will just probably think that's a location pin, so I'm not too worried about it. This thing's like it's getting new teeth or something like that. And ladies and gentlemen, here we have it. Kind of, uh, kind of a rough, uh, <laughs> rough face transplant there, but we did fix the problem. The gap is gone from where the two other blades sit. So I'm gonna cut this thing down flush on this side, maybe trim up these edges, kind of chamfer them a bit, and we'll uh, we'll put the blades in this and we'll see what kind of result we can get. I'm a little bit excited. Done a little bit of filing, a little bit of chiseling on this side. That's, there we go, now we're cooking. No, I'm not 100% sure if these screws are holding it's a bit of a gap right there, but Let's, uh, let's see. Not bad. We're getting there. Alright, well, let's put the other blades in. I've already sharpened these off camera, so I'm not that worried about the performance at this point. This is more about just getting it repaired. I can always fine-tune it later. These two blades are put side to side this way, and they actually cut the grain of the wood that you're actually chiseling out with the blade here. And it makes for a cleaner cut, a little bit better response. Alright, now these front blades, according to my readings, should be just a little bit below this blade here. Yeah, not bad. Alright, let's get this fence attached. There we go. Get a little washer on there. A rusty washer. Because it's not as bad as having rusty nuts, right? All right, well this is what a complete Kikai Shikuri Kana looks like. We have a fence, we got all our parts, we actually have a panel here that closes tight enough to where we don't have to really mess with these blades a whole lot. A little bit of a gap back here, but that's probably my fault because that may not be planed flat. It's really not a huge deal, I mean I'm just going to kind of roll with it as it is. But I'm going to fiddle with it for a little bit, get these blades set at the proper depth, and then we're going to try this thing and see what kind of result we can get. So to adjust these blades, it's actually kind of cool. This little hook right here works really well with this as a boat maker's hammer or a boat hand hammer. I think that's how you say it. Funate Geno, something like that. But I actually just take a little tent pin of this, and this is actually supposed to be a nail set. But if you want to pull the blade out, you just tap it a little bit on that. Black backs the blade out. And then if I need to go deeper, like so. Pretty nifty, I think. All right, well, these suckers are not moving. Let's grab some scrap. Let's go outside and see what we can do. All right, welcome to the back porch where I have my planing beam set up. You may remember this location from before. Yeah, should be good. Don't want to take too deep of a cut. I also don't want to not take a cut either. Okay, let's give this a shot. There we go. Yeah, check that out. That is a really deep cut. Yeah, there we go. Oop. All right, yeah, getting some big old chunks of wood out of that. There we go. Yeah, now we're cooking. As with all tools, just takes a little bit of tuning, and those are some pretty thick little curls. I'm not exactly sure what the type of curls are supposed to be on this, whether they're supposed to be thick or thin, but man, I'm, I'm kind of happy with that. All right, so that was definitely one of the most interesting projects I've pulled off recently. Uh, pretty fun, honestly, though. There wasn't a whole lot to it except to just make sure that it went back together really securely. It works. It does need a lot of tuning still, though, but that's just stuff that I don't want to spend a whole lot of time doing on camera. But I'm going to fiddle with it a little bit more and make it work a little better for my needs. If you guys liked it, make sure you comment and subscribe and like the video. And be sure to check out the Patreon as well. There's a link down in the description box. I would really appreciate any support you can offer to do more projects like this one. As always, have an awesome day. Arigato gozaimasu. Sayonara.